What's going on, everybody? Hopefully your week has been going well. In this video, we're going to talk about the Newburgh, Indiana show that I set up as a dealer on October 22nd, uh, about two weeks ago. Now, I've been holding off on this video for various reasons. I have a lot of input from the dealers I had to compile and stuff like that that I want to talk about. Did you guys see in the opening video how big, I mean, dealers packed, overpacked. People flowing through, there was a good bit of people, even though there was a show in Louisville that weekend. I, I don't know how the Louisville show went from a dealer standpoint. Um, I'd have to go back and look at my text from Chad. I don't think it was very good overall from what I recall talking about. But Newburgh had a good flow of traffic. It's probably been the first show I've been to in, oh gosh, four or five years. We're talking way pre-COVID to where basically I broke even um, with what I sold out there. And that's including like gas, table fees, food, uh, and what I bought. So, I mean, literally, I made well under, I think, $100 that show. So, it, it wasn't one of the best shows for me for selling. I talked to a lot of other dealers. They weren't selling. There was a guy that does a lot of WWE stuff. Nothing being bought. Normally, that stuff just destroys even soccer. I mean, nobody was even picking up soccer there this time. Uh, walking around the show, I did pick up two cards. They're on the screen. Only two cards I picked up. It was a Devontae Adams rookie card, uh, RPA. And then I also picked up the Crown Royal Silhouette. That's, I believe, 13, 14, 12, 13. Somewhere way back then. Dominic Wilkins. We couldn't find a price on it. It's out of 25. And the Matumbo from that set sold for 175 I found. So the deal I got on it, I think, is pretty amazing because Dominic Wilkins' stuff sells pretty well. So even if we say it's at the Matumbo price, I got a good deal. Uh, Devontae Adams' RPA is surprisingly very, very cheap out there, especially from that year. I think it's only selling like $35, $45, somewhere around there. Uh, really great receiver out there. Just was surprised. Figured I'd pick it up, add to what I got and stuff. Because I, I don't see this stuff. I'm, I'm a sucker for the silhouettes. I loved them back in the day. Still do till today. Uh, just back then, they just weren't as produced like they are now. So, let's see here. Moving along, moving along. I'm trying to look to see what I'm talking about next here. Alright, I got it. So, two other things that were picked up there, and I'll talk more about what the dealers told me about selling the show. When I walked around, a lot of stuff very well overpriced. Um, well, some guys admitted they haven't comped their stuff in a while, so understandable, but I wasn't going to sit there and do all the work looking at every card. Uh, a lot of vintage was there. You'll see in the one step... Uh, Photo, and I think I had it a little bit longer, like around 7, 10 seconds. The guy had like 20% off sticker price. Guess what? That's what it was selling for at the, the 20% off. I, I just wasn't in a bartering mood that day at all out there and just moved along. I'm just looking at the pictures that I blew up or have on there. Oh, hockey. There was a lot of hockey this time, especially older stuff. The Gretzky Tops rookie PSA for fifty two hundred. I didn't really look up what they were going for. Um, just by looking at some of the other stuff in the case, I thought it might be a little bit high, but I could be off. He had a lot of Bobby Hall autograph stuff in there. Uh, I already have a Lemieux Tops rookie that's graded out, so I didn't want to pick any more of those up. But overall, I was pretty happy seeing the vintage hockey out there. I came close to going for the McCarr, but 935 was just way over anything I would even come at and pay. And, ooh, let's see here. Some really cool basketball stuff out there. You guys seen the uh, Lou Alcinders that were out there. One Raw, one SGC. The graded was a second year. And so was the Raw, I believe. Yes, the Raw was too. Kind of funny that somebody wanted 400 for the Raw. And then the SGC 4.5 was uh, 275. I want to say those were going for like 240, 250-ish. And I thought about asking if he would go down to like 220 on it, but I just didn't. Like I said, I was still in the old asthma piece where it was kicking my butt from setting up and everything. I just 
didn't have it in me to go out there and just haggle with people on prices, especially when they were already over. So, let's see. One more thing we're going to hit. Nope, that's the last picture. All right. So, I talked to a lot of dealers out there. Like I said, nobody, nobody was selling anything out there. Um, dollar boxes and value boxes were, uh, okay. Usually, I could make... And it, it's not to float my own boat, you know, $150, $200 just off my value boxes, but it just wasn't there at all. Uh, the only dealers that I could say did well were ones that sold, like, heavily in bulk. Like, a couple guys went around buying, like, 3,200-count boxes of, like, dollar cards, 50-cent cards. Those guys there are sold out. I mean, I, I know because just from talking to a couple of people that bought out them, I mean, they were good deals, real cheap. So, I mean, that there, I mean, even if you're buying them at 40, 50% cost and you have the time and patience to deal with it, it's a good deal. Plus, that guy moved all of his stuff, made money. But a lot of the people who were just set up with cards, didn't have the, you know, two tables or a full table of value boxes, did not do well at all from what I talked with the dealers in there and stuff. Now, there might have been a couple I didn't talk to that did well. I don't know. But for majority part, Guys were just not buying. They were window shopping. There was traffic there. There were dealers that had good prices on stuff. A lot of stuff I already had in higher grades and vintage. It just didn't really want to make sense for me to buy more of it, you know? Like the Clementes I saw there that were graded. Or Clementes I saw raw that I knew weren't going to grade higher than what I already had. Mm. I'm trying to think here. But yeah, that's pretty much it now that I think about it. I was just trying to remember to show I have a lot of notes here in front of me, so I stuck them up on my screen to try to pay attention to. But overall, I mean, dealer-wise, it was packed. People coming through was packed. Just the money flow was not there for all the dealers across the board. It's nice seeing uh, people coming by, a lot of the kids and stuff like that there. It's people are being tight with their money. You could go with the economy, recession... Uh, Christmas coming up, people are being picky, choosy, whatever you want with it. And I think we're going to continue seeing that. I know uh, Sports Card Radio did a video, maybe it was a couple days ago by the time I post this. It starts out the Backyard Breaks uh, lawsuit thing, but they talk about where now dealers are telling guys walking around, if you're not doing business with a dealer, take your business outside. Man. Starting to get rough out there. But I can understand because I've been to shows before and have empty tables and these guys take it over and set up their own thing without even paying anything to be set up. I can understand the frustration. I really can on that part. To me, I, if I was to do something like that, I would, if I was still hosting card shows, I would designate an area just because how heavy these guys come through trading. And I'd only put like three or four tables together. If it's filled up, it's filled out little area. That's your little trade area amongst yourselves. Um, now, if I'm paying to get in a card show, I don't see a reason why they should say you can't do this or that unless they're, you know, blocking aisles and stuff like that there. But if it's a general free admission one, you can't complain. You're getting in for free. You're not set up there. It's the show rules, whatever it is out there. Whether I like him or not, or like it or not, the rule, I, it kind of makes sense. But for me, if I was hosting a show, I would put off a little corner area for those guys to go trade at, and you know, limit the space, and that's where they go to conduct it beside between themselves and stuff like that. There. Um, other than that, I mean, I kind of get and I kind of don't, especially when they start pulling tables and taking tables over that are empty. The dealer couldn't sell out frustration starts getting in but hmm, we'll see what happens here in the future under that stuff i believe the guy who ran the show he told those guys to take their business outside if it wasn't with a dealer i think he runs the national and a couple other uh, bigger shows too or that group so it'll be interesting to see if that's a suit that gets followed later on all right everybody sorry not really crazy video uh for the card show this weekend or the couple weekends ago i just i got a lot of notes that i was going through and a lot of the dealers all were telling me the same thing you know nobody was buying 
their guesses was, you know, economy, window shopping, holidays coming up, looking for the right thing, you know, being very picky on what they want, especially with raw and vintage raw. I mean, you can understand it. The the money flow is not like it used to be, and the people they got paid during COVID, it didn't spend, they're even being more pickier, like myself. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get paid like some of the people did, but, you know, the money I did make, I still have a good, probably 80, 85% of it, and I just haven't decided what I would ever want to do with it. You know, do I, what do I want to buy? Nothing out there is just like, I got to have this right now. All right, everybody, take care. Have a good rest of the week. Overtime be Friday night again. Uh, no shows this weekend, and I'm set up on the 12th in Louisville. I'll have a video about that coming out. All right, everybody, take care.